So we're looking at this uh, television set quickly. Uh, this uh, set belongs to my father and uh, he says that it is completely dead and in fact it is plugged in at the moment and uh, yeah not coming on at all. The standby light isn't even uh, on. My dad was watching television and the symptoms was that uh, he just heard a loud bang and then everything went dark. So uh, yeah, let's uh, get it open and see what exactly the problem might be. Okay, so uh, there are quite a few screws that I've had to remove from the back, but uh, at least I can see all the circuitry now, uh, the uh, power supply and of course the uh, control board. So immediately I can see this capacitor, it's got a, a bulge, uh, so uh, that might definitely be bad. Um, we'll have to uh, take that out and uh, give it a measure. Uh, if this capacitor is bad, then it's likely that the MOSFETs uh, situated next to it uh, might also be bad. And I also see there's a little fuse on the side here, so uh, we're going to have to uh, take a look at that fuse. But I think let's take this board out and uh, start working on it. Now I don't know if you can see, but uh, this capacitor is bulging on this side and uh, on the other side as well. Um, so. I suspect this capacitor is no longer with us and uh, we'll have to check the well not the rectifiers the uh, MOSFETs on this heatsink over here uh, they are the ones situated directly after the uh, rectifier bridge which is over there and uh, I will also just have to measure this as a fuse and just confirm whether or not this is still intact And you can see it's a 120 microfarad, 450 volt capacitor, but you can see it's uh, quite bulged over here, and of course over there as well. <laughs> yes, 21.97 nanofarad. Wow. Now this should just come out. I've already desoldered it on the other side. There we go. It's an FDPF 18 in 50. So that likely means uh, 18 amps, uh, 500 volts. So uh, let's see if I have something more or less equivalent. Okay, so you can see this MOSFET is definitely uh, toast. You can see it's measuring 9 ohms between pin 1 and 3 and 0.19 between 3 and 2. So definitely short it out. It's then quite likely that the fuse has also uh, been blown. Uh, I'll uh, just quickly check that. Okay, so the uh, 220 volts or 240 volts comes in on this connector that's on the bottom of the board here. So the fuse is just from here to here. And you can see that is open at the moment. So that will have to be replaced as well. And I was able to salvage this MOSFET from a old PC switch mode power supply. It's not the exact same component. Uh, 12, uh, 12 amps, uh, what's that? What's that? TF12N60. So it's 12 amps at 600 volts. Uh, I think it should suffice for this specific application. We're not going to be drawing that amount of uh, current through this uh, MOSFET. So uh, I think let's uh, use this as a replacement part. It's the only part that I have on hand at the moment, uh, apart from uh, trying to order one online. So uh, let's see how it goes. Oh, and I forgot to mention, I've got this Hitano capacitor. Uh, it's a 100 microfarad, uh, 450 volt capacitor. It should be okay for replacing this one over here. Uh, it's th once again, the only uh, other component that I have on hand. It's not that critical, it's just the smoothing cap for after the direct rectifier bridge. So uh, 
let's put it in and see how she goes. And this is the fuse. Uh, it's a fire amp fuse, fast blow, nicely, nicely heat shrunk, but uh, that'll have to come out as well. So that's just what the fuse looks like after taking off the uh, heat shrink. Uh, I don't have something like this, but I do have just a normal 5 amp fuse, which I'll just uh, solder some leads to, so and uh, maybe just add some heat shrink again. Okay, and uh, here we have our uh, three uh, components that we have ready. This one salvaged from the old uh, PC power supply, our newly made fuse, and this capacitor. So uh, let's get cracking. So here I'm just uh, soldering in the capacitor, making sure that uh, the joints are solid. And the other one like so and when clipping the leads I always just uh, make sure to grab the one end so that they don't go flying across the room I'll have to clean that up a little and probably glue this down so that this capacitor is just not flapping around in the breeze I even managed to salvage the little bead to put on this uh, replacement MOSFET And as before, just soldering in the uh, MOSFET, making sure to properly flow all the uh, connections, just keeping it long enough so that uh, it can nicely flow. Yeah, that looks good. Now just to quickly clip off the uh, last bit of bits and pieces of those leads making sure again to uh, cover them with my finger just so that they don't go flying everywhere or into my eyes excellent And then last but not least, just soldering in the fuse that we made. Like so, and as usual, just clipping off those extra bits and pieces of lead.
Nice. Okay, so it's time to replace the board back into the television set. Just have to take care uh, to reconnect everything correctly. Uh, first the, uh, the ground and then the 240 volt supply. Not going to connect these connectors now, so uh, we can uh, plug it in and uh, turn it on. Yeah, nothing uh, seems to be blowing up, so that's a good sign. It's probably time to measure some of the output voltages now. So we've got ground right at the end here. And there we go. It's uh, 5 volt standby. Okay, so not all the voltages are active at the moment because currently this power supply is turned off uh, except for the uh, standby voltage so I think we can plug these in now and uh, and see if the TV uh, turns on oh yeah we've uh, got some action happening here that is the standby LED so let's just turn it on yeah there we go green LED let's measure some voltages That is 12 volts. Five volts. And over here we should have 24 volts. Yeah, 23.8. Excellent. And maybe just as a final test, I want to see what the ripple is like. I've got this multimeter set up on that capacitor. Um, I'm going to first measure the DC voltage and then turn the television set on uh, so that it's under load uh, change it to AC just see what the ripple is like on that capacitor okay so 325 volt DC let's power it on okay the set is turned on right now so 400 volts DC over that cap. Let's just have a look at the AC component. About 4 volts AC, that's uh, not too bad. Uh, I don't think that's, that's an issue. It means the, uh, the uh, ripple current on that capacitor is not too high. Uh, so that's more or less what we want to see. Yeah, two screws left and two holes left. Always good to have the screws and the holes match up. Okay, and here she is, all done. Uh, sorry about all the reflections there. Hello. Uh, you can see the uh, standby light is on right in the corner on the bottom right there. Let's Turn the power on. Yep, it turns green. Built by born perfectionists. Fantastic. Yeah, that is definitely uh, working. Uh, I'm not going to test any of the inputs right now. I think uh, that's uh, basically already uh, going to work because the only problem here was with that power supply. All right, guys. If you uh, like these kinds of uh, videos, please let me know by uh, giving this one a nice big thumbs up and I'll continue making them. Cheers. <laughs>